Okay, here I'm going to look at uh, finding the domain for a couple different problems. And the main thing you need to remember, okay, so you don't want zero in the bottom of a fraction. You don't want negative numbers underneath a square root. And if you have any type of logarithm, natural logarithm, whatever's on the inside of your logarithm, okay, it has to be that quantity has to be greater than zero, strictly greater than zero. So those are going to be kind of the, um, so okay, so bad, we don't want zero in the denominator, we don't ne want negative numbers. Um, we do want for values inside of a logarithm to be greater than zero. So that's going to be our restrictions. So we don't have any logarithms in these problems, but we will in the next video. So to start off with, f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 4. Well, there's really none of these restrictions going on. I don't have any fractions. I think, okay, good. I don't see any radicals. I don't see any logarithms. So this is what's known, again, as just a polynomial when you have variables to positive whole, uh, whole number powers. And uh, you can have constants floating around. So the domain of a polynomial... The domain of a polynomial is all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, you can write that in different ways. Um, the set of all real numbers. So no restrictions on, on our polynomial. And again, polynomials are nice. You'll see them in calculus. They're, they're smooth. They don't have any sharp points when you graph them. They're one piece. They're continuous, is what we say. Okay, 46. I've got f of x equals 2 over x minus 1. Well, again, the value that we want to omit, we want to omit the value of x that makes the denominator equal to 0. So, okay, I just make the equation x minus 1 equals 0. Well, that's going to give me x equals 1. That's the value I have to leave out. So, in this case, my domain would just be from negative infinity up to positive 1, union, 1 to positive infinity. Again, using parentheses to indicate that we skip over that value of 1. We don't use it. Okay, so for 47 now, I've got 2x plus 3 over x squared minus 1. The numerator, I don't really care about at all. That's In this case, again, that's a polynomial. There's no restrictions on that, so I'm not even going to worry about it. So again, I have to omit the values when the denominator equals 0. Well, we could add 1 to both sides, take the square root of both sides. Don't forget, when you take the square root of both sides, you have to include a positive and negative on one side of the equation. So the, the values we have to omit in this case will be positive and negative 1. So again, the domain in this case will be from negative infinity up to negative 1, union, from negative 1 to positive 1, union, from 1 to infinity. So again, we're just omitting the values negative 1 and positive 1. Last but not least, we have f of x equals the square root of x plus 4. Again, we want the quantity underneath the radical. We want that to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, so I've got my inequality, x plus 4, greater than or equal to 0. And that'll simply say that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So my domain will be from negative 4, we'll use brackets there, out to positive infinity. And again, that's going to be my domain. So you could have had a more complicated expression underneath the, um, the radical. It could, be could have been quadratic or a rational expression. Um, and the good thing is, hey, we've already seen videos on how to solve those types of inequalities. So in that case, you would just proceed as in one of the previous videos if you had a more complicated type of inequality. So, all right, I'm going to do a few more um, domain questions in the next video. Um, again, a couple of logarithms. They won't be too terribly bad. Uh, maybe 50 will be the, the, you know, the, maybe the most tricky one. But again, shouldn't be too terrible, I think.